Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Today, we would like to present BarnFind Optical Fiber products. My name is Manfred Renner, Sales Manager at Broadcast Solutions. And later on, Ben Asunder will join in from BarnFind. So by the way, where do you install BarnFind Optical Fiber products? At all kinds of broadcast applications like in and between studios, in OB vans, and between OB vans and stadiums, events, transport of signals between floors and buildings, remote production, etc. Typically, any kind of signal from 100 meter to 100 kilometer distance, point to point via single fiber, or CWM systems via one fiber. So where, in which industries you will find find as a product. For example, oil and gas industry, digital signage, telemedicine, campuses, government, industry, house of worship, CCTV, security, defense, even on cruise ships, you will find them, entertainment, events, education, sports, and motorsports. But not only this, in the picture in the middle, you will see fish farms in Norway, even there you will find barn find. On the webpage, www.barnfind.no, you will find a lot of solutions. For example, stage box routine examples, mixed signals in a stage box, mixed signals with uh, SFPs, camera to CCU solutions, KVM transmissions, Ethernet transmissions. An interesting point is color converting. So if you do have multi-mode coming in and you need to convert them into single mode, BarnFind has it. For example, also camera to CCU solutions using high low technology or automatic redundancy changeover. The principles of a CWM system. In a WDM or CWM system, single wavelength can be separate with a prisma, similar to the picture shown, right? There is no bandwidth limitation at all. WDM, wavelength division multiplexing, is a way to transmit two individual signals on one fiber. The BIDI SFP modules are specially made for this purpose. So SFPs, sorry, are always working as a pair a and B using two different transmitting wavelengths, 1310 and 1550. The multiplexer is integrated in the SFP with a standalone WDM MUX. At either end of the fiber, it is possible to have two signals traveling the same direction on the fiber. That means you do have 1310 and 1550 on one side, combining them and sending them over the line. CWM, coarse wavelength division multiplexing, allows up to 18 signals to travel on one fiber strand. Any protocol can travel beside another over the same link as long as it's in a specific wavelength. For example, HDSDI can, can travel at 1570, alongside 3GSDI at 1590 nanometer, and MADI, for example, at 1510 nanometer. The channel spacing, it's always 20 nanometer. As you can see, we do have wavelengths from 1270 to 1610, 18 channels in total. Having the, looking at the, the optical maxes, it's like in the airspace. You do have planes flying on a certain level in one direction, on the other direction, the plane is going in the opposite direction. Even here, it's the same way. When you look at the right side, you do have red signals traveling combined in the MUX, traveling on one line into the MUX, demuxed, and uh, going out on the left side. Or blue signals traveling from the left, combined in the MUX, traveling on one line, demuxed, and going out on the right side.
High-low SFPs. Bound forest high-low SFPs are designed to meet the need for higher density of signals in one single fiber. By using half of the spacing in each wavelength, high-low SFPs can double the capacity of a traditional CWM bidirectional transmission. That means you can enable the total number of 36 channels on one line. These high-low SFPs are designed to be used with a standard CDM, CWM optical multiplexer. That means you can use all kinds of CWM muxes from different manufacturers. So there's no need to have it from a single manufacturer. Take them, put in the high-low SFPs, and you can bring in a 20, uh, 20 nanometer channel spacing to wavelengths, a high wavelengths and a low wavelength. This is a very important picture because here you see all the different signals which you can bring in the bond find system. The most important here is the transparency. The system transports all signals fully transparent, latency free and format independent. On the optical side, we can go up to 100 G. That means you can transport your IP signals, your SDDI signals, SD, HD, analog video, even MADI, HDMI, 12G, DMX, light control signals, 10G, Ethernet, analog audio, GPIO, and standard Ethernet signals you can transport via the bound fund fiber solution. You can transport them on one fiber, both directions, for example, on the right side, facilities like studios, buildings, whatever, or stadiums, or OB vans, or uplink vans. The key to the success are the SFPs. SFPs are now available in the, in the whole range. So you can have them in MSA or non-MSA. MSA stands for multi-source agreement. So a lot of manufacturer um, make it available, be available that uh, you can use them in different products. So there's no limitation having only one manufacturer producing a special SFP for one product. On the left side, you see the SFPs in their form factor. They're very tiny. It works like Lego. You take what you need. You do have BNC, stain connectors, fibers, HDMI connectors. So there's a whole range of SFPs which are available. As a product, Barn Fund has three product ranges. So we do have the Barn One, which is a one rack unit frame, up to 32 by 32 SFP ports, control, Ethernet control, redundant power supply, and of course, fan unit, which you can remove if necessary. The power consumption is extremely low. So it's roughly 30 watts per one rec unit. And then we do have the Barn Mini, which is a small unit with uh, SFPs, for example, um, with uh, BNCs, with fiber in. So we can, we're very flexible to just placing in the SFPs, taking them out and placing them back. On Core is a new system coming out soon. It's a half 19 inch rack unit system, aluminum frame, rock solid for outside range. We do have their BNC connectors or SFP ports. In total, we do have eight BNCs, four ins, four outs, 12G. Power connector, Neutric PowerCon, and two Duracon glass fiber connectors from Neutric. The Barnfind has a bunch of frames with different front ends. Having SFP ports, BNC bidirectional, that means you can use 
the BNC as an input or an output, you just define it. And you do have integrated CWM blocks. And for example, on the BTF 10716, you see all of that in one frame. That means you do have eight BNCs, 16 SFP slots, and one CWM block 16 channel. All of them are available in 3G. But not only this, the new frame is going up to 12G 4K. A full 32 by 32 transparent matrix is included. As a standard, you see on the right side, on the left side, 16 channels SFPs, which can be expanded with the expansion board up to 32 by 32 channels, no matter if it's BNC or class, whatever. GPI interfaces, IO interfaces are built in. You see it on the right side. Redundant power, power uh, connections on the back, and of course, a fan unit. Now, my colleague Benno from Bond Fund will take over and explain the next three, three pictures. The BTF 110, for example, the audio frame, including 264 by 264 MADI rotor. Now it's Benno. Thank you, Manfred. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, the BTF 110 uh, features a uh, integrated MADI router with uh, four MADI input and output ports connecting to the internal uh, video matrix and additional eight analog inputs and outputs. So altogether, you have a very powerful uh, 264 by 264 channel audio matrix. It can be clocked to any of the incoming MADI inputs or it can intern internally synchronize to 48 or 44.1 kilohertz. The uh, number 10 frame can be used for applications like uh, commentary positions because you can run your, all your monitors, your audio, your intercom, and your uh, um, inf graphical information system, your commentary information system, all on one frame and all on one fiber or on two redundant fibers in one rack unit. To control the whole system and to control each BindFind frame, BindFind provides a software called Bind Studio. Bind Studio offers, beside uh, Crosspoint Switcher, uh, the possibility to monitor incoming and outgoing SDI signals. Uh, it tells you the bandwidth of the signal, tells you if there's any CRC errors or any other errors. Um, it offers, of course, uh, firmware upgrade uh, possibilities uh, and any failures in the frame, fan speed, other diagnostics. If a reclocker has a problem, it will display it straight away. Uh, you have the possibility to even turn off reclockers or bypass them in case you uh, have signals which are not SDI or which are not MADI, unknown signals. Uh, you don't want to reclock those with an SDI reclocker. Uh, all those this uh, functionality of, is offered in Bion Studio. And Bion Studio as well offers the control of the uh, integrated uh, redundancy change over switch, which uh, comes free of charge, and which means that for each input into the frame, you have 32, 31 redundant inputs, which you can configure. So no matter which signal fails, any of the other inputs of the frame can be configured to be redundant to, for example, input number one. The uh, automatic switch can be triggered by a loss of signal, or it can be even triggered by uh, CRC errors if your signal is an SDI signal. It doesn't matter for this uh, redundancy change over switch if you have a, an optical input 
or an electrical input. No matter what it is, you could even have one backup signal for all other 31 inputs, just to make sure you don't lose your signal in case of a cable failure or whatsoever. Manfred, maybe you have some news about uh, our new product series, Barn Color. Oh, sure, sure, Ben, sure, we do have our new baby, Barn Color. Half 19 inch track frame, 16 bi directional wavelength. As you can see, we do have three, four different colors green, pink, yellow, and blue. That means we do have a connection bi-directional connection fiber between A and A. So we can build up a connection four times 12 G, four wavelengths bi-directional, whatever signal we are transporting over this line. So easily we can expand the green system with a purple, yellow and blue system. So in totally, you can have 16 channels bi-directional, no matter what kind of signal you are feeding in and taking out. At the end, we are just presenting a 10G redundant city connection. We just want to, man, want to show the MCR on the right side. and the bottom, we do have a hub. And on the left side, we do have a remote location, which can be a studio or stadium or whatever. Uh, on the left side, you see the different wavelength we are using. So let me just repeat, we do have the MCR on the right side, on the uh, button, uh, the button we do have the hub, and on the left side, we do have the remote location. The wavelengths we'll see from 80, 80 50 nanometer, which is multi-mode, and the rest is CWM frequencies. In the MCR, we do have six times 10 G coming in and out on multi-mode. We use the barn mini modules to convert them, the wavelengths into the CWM wavelength. In such a frame, we can be house in 16 of the barn mini modules. Then we, we go out two different ways, two different paths into a CWM system, eight channel CWM system. And then we go from the MCR directly to the remote location or from the MCR via the hub, loop through and going into the remote location. So wherever we have a cut, the signal, the 10G signal will travel either on one line or the other. It doesn't really matter. We always do have a redundancy, even with on the electronic side or on the fiber side. Next example is a 12G redundant video data city connection. That means we do have two boxes or two locations. On the right side, we do have a master control room. We do have a hub, which is just, just the optical bridge. And on the other side, it's a remote location. It can be a studio, it can be a parliament or a stadium, whatever. Or just two stage boxes, no matter what it is. On the left side, we see the different signals we can transport. For example, SDI, both ways, CCVPS, or as a reference, for example, or an Ethernet signal, MADI signal, GPIO, RS422. So even here, we do have two physical optical links, dark fiber. That means from the barn one, 4K frame in the MCR, we do have signals out going to the CWM block. The output of the CWM block goes into optical switch. And from here, either the one side or the other side, it's switched through. How to achieve this? All the time, we do have a communication running between the two green fra frames. That means if a caterpillar cuts the cable, cuts the fiber somewhere in the city, 
automatically the frame in the MCR will recognize this and will trigger via GPI the chain, optical changeover in the MCR. And then the, all the signals are switched to the redundant path. So we will never have a loss of signal. Thanks for joining us. Feel free to ask questions. Thank you. Okay, no questions. So thank you very much for joining in and uh, nice to see you. Bye-bye.